another Whoa Wednesday with me, Mr. Goody Grammar. I hope everyone had an amazing day, an amazing last week, and it's going to get even better. But why, Mr. Goody Grammar? Ha! Great question. That's because tonight we shall be going over Word of the Week, episodes 22 through 26. So make sure to grab your blue cap, maybe a little side water, maybe a pet cat, and get ready for tonight. Why was that again? Oh yeah, it's a whoa Wednesday. So let's jump into it. Tonight, let me give you a brief overview of our wonderful evening together. I'm going to start off by giving the sentence shout outs of the week. Those are basically the sentences in the comments section that you create. That's absolutely, whoa, amazing. So, of course, I got to give you those shout outs. Followed by a basket breaker. Then, come on, why are we here tonight? Oh, yeah, the word of the week review, which we will definitely, definitely jump into. And, of course, the grammar, goody. Shout out of the week! Ah! Is it you? Is it your mother? Is it your best friend's cousin? Ah, stay to the end to find out. And finally, we'll check out and I'll give you some updates. What's going on at General Grammar? You'll find out tonight. Alrighty, alrighty. So again, whether you're watching this on YouTube later on or you're with me right now on Facebook Live, Make sure to participate in the comments section. Come on! It's a Whoa Wednesday! And it wouldn't be that without you. So, make sure to participate. So, to start things off, let's go ahead and get our first sentence shoutouts. The first one comes from the amazing grammar goodie, Juicy Pickles 445 Thank you again, Juicy Pickles, for your amazing participation. So, Juicy Pickles 445 sentences... Someone told me that they aren't subscribed to Mr. Goody Grammar. Huh? Let's just say that I started a cacophony. Whoa! Juicy Pickles, absolutely. And I'm proud of you for defending general grammar. That's what I'm talking about. You should have created a cacophony. And you'll notice, everyone, that Juicy Pickles 445 used cacophony correctly. That's what you want to do. That was taken directly from this week's Word of the Week, Cacophony's comment section. That's why it's so important to participate. But shouldn't we do another Grammar Goody Scented shout out? Absolutely. So, the next one comes from Ireland DJ, also known as Darren. All right. So, for the sentence, there will be calamity if you didn't cook that egg from the beginning of that episode. Darren, Ireland DJ, whoa! That is absolutely amazing. You're talking about the egg that, hmm, I cracked open at the beginning of an episode. Did I cook it? The world may never know. <laughs> so awesome job, Grammar Goodies. Those were two sentence shout outs, but remember, Stick around to the end to see if you got the grammar goodie scented shadow of what? The week! Yeah! Alrighty. So, with this in mind, I think it's time we jump into a little basket breaker. Ah. Basket breaker. Woo! Uh, uh oh. This week's Basket Breaker question is, what words should I do for upcoming Word of the Week episodes? What words do you want to see? Make sure to throw that into the comments section. Why? Oh, I can create videos that you want to see, your favorite words, put into beautiful cinema. So, again, what words should I do for upcoming Word of the Week episodes? Let me know in the comment section. Again, whether you're on Facebook with me right now 
or you're watching this later on on YouTube, comment in the comment section. Cool? Awesome! I put for my answer, flabbergasted! <laughs> what does that mean? Find out in an upcoming episode. <laughs> Sweet! Whoa! We <sighs> broke that basket too quickly. Ah! But that's alright, because we're about to get into the meat of today's Whoa Wednesday. That's right. We're about to drink up some radioactive waste. <laughs> Let's review. Three, two, one. Those words. So, the first word of the week that we're going to go over is rapscallion. Rapscallion. One of my favorite words. And if you haven't checked out the video already, what are you doing? Get on it. It will make you... <laughs> and if you don't remember what rapscallion means, let me go ahead and jog your memory. Rapscallion is a noun. That means a mischievous person. Ooh, someone who's up to no good. That's what rapscallion is. Rapscallion. And some synonyms for rapscallion are a mean, evil, or unprincipled person. Ah, wow, sounds like my ex. Perfect, yeah! So, again, rapscallion is an individual that's sneaky, up to no good, right? Unprincipled. Oh, those rapscallions. Hmm, but that was the definition and some synonyms. Okay, shouldn't we see how it's used in a couple of sentences? Yeah! So, let's do it. The first sentence is, The neighbor's dog is always peeing in our yard. Gross. I think the rapscallion is intentionally doing it. Huh! That dog, the neighbor's dog, is always peeing in our yard. And then the neighbors, I mean not the neighbors, the people who are going, Wow, dog! They think that that dog or that rapscallion, because it's up to no good, is doing it on purpose. Huh! Little tapioca, get out of the yard! Now! Sound like a mixture of Cher and someone who smokes about 14 packs of cigarettes a day. Wow, thanks, voice. All right, so again, we're seeing here rapscallion is used to describe this mischievous little dog. Pretty cool. All right, let's look, go ahead and look at another example. Ernesto could not hear the teacher. For the rapscallion at the front of the class was yelling excessively. Ugh. We all hate that. We're trying to listen and someone's going, Rrr. I'm usually that rapscallion. But in this case, Ernesto is describing whatever, or the kid at the front of the class, who's Rrr, as a rapscallion. Someone who's up to no good. Pretty simple, right? Rapscallion is, whoa, amazing, amazing, amazing. But, mm, no, we shouldn't just end it there. It's time for you to practice this word. What I want you to go ahead and do is use the word rapscallion in your own sentence. Again, the sentence can be about whatever you want, but you have to use the word rapscallion in it. But what should you do when you're done writing that sentence? Oh, yeah. Throw it into the comment section. I want to see what you come up with. And if it's, whoa, amazing, maybe you'll get a sentence shout out next week. We'll find out. So again, go ahead and put rapscallion into an original sentence and boom, post it into the comment section. Let's see if you've really mastered this word or... If you're just an unruly rapscallion. Ha! Hmm. 
So while you do that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our second word of the night. Our second word of the week is infer. What? We see this word all the time, but what does it mean? We're about to find out. So infer is a verb because it's something that you do. And the definition is to conclude from evidence or assumptions rather than from explicit statements. It's like drawing a conclusion in a way from things going on. Let's go ahead and look at the synonyms to make it a little bit more clear for you. So some synonyms for the word infer are deduce, conclude, or judge. My favorite synonym for infer is conclude. All right? I can conclude this from whatever was presented to me. Come to a conclusion. That's what infer means. You're looking at things. It doesn't always have to be explicit, but you're drawing and making these conclusions. All right. Wow. That was pretty straightforward. Huh. Are we done, though? Absolutely not! Let's go ahead and see how infer is used in a couple of sentences. Boom! Example. It can be inferred from the number of teeth stolen that the tooth fairy is the thief. Ah! Get away from my pillow. I am losing teeth all the time, though. So, if we see in this example, what is being inferred? It's being inferred that the tooth fairy is the thief. But how is that being inferred? How, how are they coming to the conclusion that the tooth fairy is the thief? Well, it can be inferred from the number of teeth stolen that the tooth fairy is the thief. So again, inferred is like conclude. Let's, let's go ahead and look at another example. Boom! Considering that Janet's co-workers were not talking to her, she inferred that they were upset about something. So Janet was like, oh, okay, why are my co-workers not talking to me? She inferred, came to the conclusion that they weren't talking to her because, mm, they were upset about something. But what could that something be? Hmm. Janet, you're gossiping by the water cooler again. Cut it out! But we can see how infer is used correctly in this statement. Hmm. But from everything going on so far, what can you infer about what you're going to do next? Ah! I know! You're going to go ahead and use the word infer in your own original sentence. That's right! You will create a sentence using infer, and you're going to go ahead and pop that bad boy right into the comment section. What are you going to come up with? If you come up with a sentence that talks about the Kool-Aid man, extra points to you. So, last reiteration, we have the word infer. Create your own sentence and plop that into the comments section. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and drink some water. <laughs> ah, delicious. I felt that <coughs> go down my esophagus. It was wonderful. Ah, so I'm going to infer that you're all done and ready to go. Because guess what? We're going on to our next word. Boom! Calamity! Calamity? Huh. It sounds like a very, very strong word, right? Because it is. But what does it mean again? Huh. Calamity is a noun. And it's a noun that means an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress. In essence, it's a disaster, oh, the calamity of it all. <laughs> Let's go ahead and sprinkle in some synonyms so you know what I'm talking about. Some synonyms for the word calamity are 
disaster, tragedy, and crisis. Basically, hmm, tons of words that represent my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. So, let's see it used in a couple of sentences. The calamity of the insurrection will be recorded in American history. Yeah! Okay, if we see here, if calamity means chaos, disaster, everything, then the insurrection was full of it, right? So we use the word calamity to describe all the chaos disaster of the insurrection that will go down in American history. Crazy, right? Huh. But should we look at calamity used in another sentence? For sure. Here we go. During their nightly dinner, the Gregson family members descended into an absolute calamity when a mouse popped out of a dish. I wonder who's cooking. How did they... They didn't check the macaroni and cheese to see that Stuart Little was running around? Come on. The chaos of it all. The calamity. So, again, calamity describes the disaster, the chaos of it all when it comes to their nightly dinner. Hmm. Calamity is such a fun word, not only to say, but to use, especially if you're trying to use loaded language, loaded words to emphasize a point. Oh, but guess what? I'm about to cause a little bit of calamity in your life. How? Oh, that's right. I'm going to have you create your own sentence using the word calamity in it. Then, wait, do you already know what you're going to do with that sentence? Oh, yeah, you do. You're going to post that into the comment section for me. What are you going to, what are you going to talk about? What's all the calamity about? So get to it. Water for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Pretty cool, right? I'm guessing you're already done. So I'm going to move on to the next word which is indicative. Yeah! But what does indicative mean? Indicative is an adjective. That means showing, signifying, or pointing out. Hmm. I would say signifying or showing. Probably the strongest words to define the word indicative. But to make sure that you know it even more, Let's go ahead and look at some synonyms. Some synonyms for the word indicative are expressive, suggestive, representative, typical, or even characteristic. Hmm, it points to something. It's signifying something. But what is it signifying? Let's see how it's used in a couple of sentences. First off, we have the man's bite was indicative of a werewolf attack. So if we see here, indicative is used to basically come to the conclusion here, or signifying that this man's bite was signifying a werewolf attack. It's showing, it's representing that, oh, this bite represents that, oh, it was a werewolf attack. So, showing or signifying are probably the strongest words that you could replace with it. But let's see how it's used in another example. His excessive collection of pool floats may be indicative of a hoarder buried alive. Coming this fall on TLC. As we can see here, he owns an excessive amount of pool floats. And that signifies, or that shows, or it's indicative of a hoarder. Someone who collects too much. It's pilot high! So, indicative, again, is used to be representative of something. 
This shows this. Huh. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. But, hmm, how can we spice this up even more? I got it! We'll spice it up by, ho, oh, having you write your own original sentence that uses the word indicative in it. Come on, there are so many things to choose. What are you going to write about? Hmm? You tell me by putting it into the comment section. Again, your own original sentence that uses the word indicative. Whoa! Wednesday! And we're crushing it. Keep it going, grammar goodies. We're almost there, and I know you've almost mastered all of these words. Yeah! So, as you do that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the next one. And in fact, it's the final word of the evening. That's right, I'm talking about cacophony. <laughs> That's currently this week's word of the week. So make sure to go ahead and check it out on www.mrgoodygrammar.com. Whoa! What does cacophony mean, though? Let me tell you. Cacophony is a noun. Basically, it's like a harsh, discordant mixture of sounds. Yes! Ow, my ears. If your ears are currently bleeding, uh, you probably were trapped in a cacophony of sounds, right? Huh? So again, it's a mixture of just really harsh sounds. To make it, you know, a little bit more clear, let me go ahead and show you some synonyms. So some synonyms for the word cacophony are noise, racket, discord, basically everything that describes any family holiday. <laughs> Never cook turkey again, mom. Okay, so again, racket, oh, right? There's just a lot of noise. It's harsh. It's overpowering. It's ah. So that is cacophony. But let's see it used in a couple of sentences. Boom! Example one. The cacophony radiating from the standstill traffic was insufferable. I just want to get home. Ugh. If you can see, cacophony is used to describe the sounds that are coming from that standstill traffic. It, beep, beep, beep. And by the way, everyone, use your blinkers. <laughs> Indicate that you're turning, or else you're a big jerk. <laughs> so, with this, right, cacophony, whoa, tons and tons of sounds, harsh, coming from that standstill traffic. But let's see it used in another sentence. Boom. The cacophony of war suppressed the general's words. Mm. So all the sounds that come from war, the harsh battles, we're in the trenches, suppressed the general's words. So overpowered the general's words. The sound was so crazy and harsh and wah, that the general's words went to the sideline. Couldn't hear it. Ah. So with that in mind, we went over cacophony. And I want you to use cacophony in its own sentence. Make me laugh and throw it into the comment section. Whether mm, you're with me on Facebook Live right now or mm, you're watching this later on on YouTube, participate in the comment section. Create your own sentence using the word cacophony. Huh. And while you're writing that down, hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and... Can't get enough general grammar? Make sure to sign up on www.mrgoodygrammar.com to become a grammar goody. There, you'll receive extended episodes, guided notes, worksheets, PowerPoints, quizzes, and so much more. Also, follow us doing Whoa Wednesday live streams on Facebook, random dances on TikTok, and handing out grammar challenges on Instagram. With all these resources, you can't help but have the best time learning about English grammar. Whoa! Jump into a quick aisle check. 
So for I'll check this this week, here I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Make sure to share, subscribe, and tag your friends to make them take the Whoa Wednesday challenge. Have them write sentences using the word of the week words. Huh? Can they improve their vocab just like you did? We'll find out. And grammar goodies, can you believe it? We're over 1,400 subscribers now. Whoa! So make sure to get your friends, your family, and even that distant uncle to come into general grammar and hit that subscribe button. Hmm. But I want to make sure that ha, I go ahead and reward you for all your hard work. Why? Uh, let's go ahead and look at the grammar goody sentence shout out of the week. Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> This week's Grammar Goodie sent out, uh, sentence shout out of the week goes to the age of Aquarius. Yes, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. You did it. Dawn has risen hmm, with this amazing sentence. The large bags under my eyes were indicative of my suspicious sleep quality. <laughs> right there with you, age of Aquarius. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> So, that was amazing, amazing, amazing sentence by a regular grammar goodie, Age of Aquarius. Thank you so much for participating. Do you want to have the grammar goodie sentence shout out of the week? Huh, it's simple. Make sure to participate in the comments section in any of our videos. That way, you can get a sentence shout out. Hmm. And let me go ahead and remind you of a couple of things coming up. As you know, there is a word of the week that comes out every Sunday. What will this word? Whoa, Wednesday, get your tongue tied. What will this Sunday's word be? Hmm? Find out then. Also, live sessions are every Wednesday. But what are those called? Whoa, Wednesday. We also have content episodes every other Friday, including this Friday where episode 18 comes out, all about dependent clauses. So make sure to jump on that. Also, sentence shadows, just like I discussed, they come out regularly. And finally, what do you want me to teach? Let me know. Post that into the comment section so I can create Whoa Wednesday for you. Pretty cool, right? Well, uh, Grammar Goodies, I want to go ahead and thank you so much for coming into General Grammar. Make sure to follow us on all our platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and our amazing website, www.mrgoodygrammar.com, where you can sign up and become an official Grammar Goodie. There, you'll receive extra content, extended episodes, worksheets, PowerPoints, quizzes, so much. So make sure to sign it on up at www.mrgoodygrammar.com. Woo! Grammar goodies, oh, I'm exhausted. These words of the week were pretty incredible, right? Hmm. But it wouldn't be anything without you joining me on a whoa Wednesday. As always, my name is Mr. Goody Grammar. Comma in to General Grammar anytime. I'll see ya. Woo!